Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. See that with the, the cool call letters and everything? Love it. Uh, <laughs> we are going to have a riot tonight because we're going to be doing some improv with our guest, Tim Powers. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. All right. See that right on cue. He's allowed uh, on the show because he answered the question correctly. Right. Now, you can ask some questions, but we're going to be doing some uh, some massive improv in the second half of the show. So stick around for that. We have a lot of guests coming in. I want to see how you do this on StreamYard with multiple screens as opposed to just doing it live together and going zip, zap, zoom and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, are you ready, Mr. Widom? Yeah, let's do this thing. All right, Tim, you all set there? All set, let's go. Okay, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. If you haven't figured it out yet, I'm Dan Leonard, because it says so right there. Dan, I'm George the Tech. And this him. is yeah, and this is voiceover. Body shop. Or a VO V S. V S B S. Well, sorry we were off last week, but you were probably all off firing Hopefully. off fireworks, blowing your hands off and stuff. So if you want to see a video of that, let me know. Yeah, well, I did have a cool video because because Marcy and I were landing at LAX at approximately nine forty five on timing. Tuesday night, and it looked like LA was under attack. <laughs> yeah, just, just, you know, with depending with some on your neighborhood, it was. Yeah, it was, it was and it freaking was, pandemonium. Yeah, I mean, from Lake Arrowhead all the way across the you know from San Bernardino across the hills down into the basin. Boom, 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 boom. I think I posted that on Facebook, so if you want to see what that I guess you're like. in the northeast, northeast, though, mostly you're watching drone shows. Maybe. Which I would be completely fine with, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Saw a lot of lightning, too, and mm. fireworks under lightning. It was kind Super of... Super cool. Yeah. Anyway. Tonight, we are going to be talking about improv, which is really, really important, and we're going to live in the moment, I guess is the best way to put it. But let me introduce our guest, uh, voice actor and improv facilitator. Tim Powers' credits include voice work for Disney, Netflix, Final Fantasy, Genshin Impact, and of course the award-winning audio drama podcast, Carcrium, Carcurium. I've Not one I've listened to, but apparently now I have to. <laughs> but he's also known as the friendly <laughs> voice of that trusted neighbor across the street that gives you good advice. He also studied with the Groundlings. Hey, that's that's not nothing. And Upright Citizens Brigade in Los Angeles. And his own troupe in Hollywood. He ran it for 10 years called Box Office Poison. Uh, his Timprov Interactive Workshop of Improvisational Theater Games are designed to help actors stay in the moment and release the need for perfectionism, which is perfect for this show. Let's welcome... <laughs> Tim Powers. Hey, oh, Tim. Oh, hey, fellas. Sorry. It got stuck in my dashboard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the it's my, show. It's my, it's my demo, guys. So if anybody uh, needs it, just let me know. I'll drop it. I have a pencil way. around here somewhere. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, that's from long ago. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I keep telling people. You know, everybody's intimidated by computers. It's like, no, nah, it's just like a, re a cassette recorder. Yeah. Stop, play, record. But no, no, it's a computer. I got to I gotta program it. No. No, don't be intimidated by that. No. But another thing that's intimidating is, in, is improv to a lot of people. Um, but we'll get into that in a second. You got a great resume there. You've been a busy guy over the past few years. Thank you. Tell, tell us how you got into voiceover and into improv. 
it was uh, it, it, a long and winding road. I was always the funny kid, right? I'm the I'm the youngest kid in a big family, so can't win I them all, to, huh? Yeah, yeah. I had to learn to either be funny or be completely ignored. Yeah, and so you know, I was that kid who was you know n- not the wacky kid in class, but I was mm. the funny kid. There's a difference between what I call the class clown and the class comedian. Right. And the class clown was the guy who would run naked down the 50 yard line during the homecoming game, steal the football and a rainbow wig and do a wacky dance. Sure. The class comedian was the guy that talked him into doing it. <laughs> right? Class comedian had material. That, right. Right. Like I got out of I got out of so much trouble just by just by cleverly, you know, talking my way out of it and being funny and being uh, in the moment. Mm-hmm. And in my 20s, I went through, uh, let's, let's just call it some trauma. And as part of my recovery from that trauma, I started uh, doing stand-up and I took an improv class. Uh, my first improv class was uh, September 12th, 2001, which was a very difficult day to be funny. Mm. But, cause I had ar- but I had already submitted and, I, and people were, were, there was an existential crisis within the comedy community. You know, can we still be funny? at this point and what we found was that staying in the moment helped you helped heal that grief those of you who have seen the movie the um um uh, what are the aristocrats right it talked about how gilbert godfrey wants to be a cat right (laughs) not that (laughs) one not that one oh sorry right it it talked about how how comedy helps right yeah. Uh, so I took my first improv class there, moved to LA, worked at the, worked at the comedy store, worked at the Hollywood improv, worked at the, um, the ice house, um, and got in studying with, uh, with the groundlings over on Melrose. The groundlings is a legendary comedy theater that gave us Lorraine Newman, Phil Hartman, Pee Wee Herman, Will Ferrell, Chris Kattan, um, and did my time there, went on to work with the Upright Citizens Brigade, which was a theater started in New York. Their Hollywood location um, gave us all kinds of wonderfully talented people. It's a tra- it's basically a training ground for learning the basics of improvisational comedy, which really started back post-World War II with Second City in Chicago. Long story. Um, but it's, you know, the improv tradition goes all the way back to people like Nichols and May. Alan Arkin was a member of Second City. Um, uh, Robert Klein, um, uh, Joan Rivers, uh, Burns and Schreiber <laughs> to, to dust off some names. Uh, and the, the whole concept of improvisation is creating theater in the moment, completely unscripted. It's not about being funny. And that's the thing I think that freaks everybody out. They're like, I can't be funny just spontaneously. I can't do anything spontaneously. Baloney, everybody does everything spontaneously. You're not that big of a control freak, you know, that you can't live in the moment. Everybody has instinct. You guys have been doing this show. You told me since 2008, I've been following it for four or five years now. You guys improvise all day long against each other. That's what you do. You live in the moment, you know, um, like if you're driving home from work and the road is closed, you don't just sit there, wait for them to open the road. You improvise, you find another way around it. And so the, the beauty of improvisation is staying present in the moment, being flexible, being able to agree to what's around you. We'll talk a little bit about yes and uh, in a little bit, but it allows you to take direction really well, create characters out of absolutely nothing. And it just allows you to be spontaneous. You know, I work with a lot of new green voice actors and a lot of them are like, I got to do it right. I got to do it right. How do I, how do I do this right? And there is no right. There's Mm -hmm. just, there's just the the way you do it. Right. Well, we always hear of the importance of improv for, for for voice talents. Everybody's like, when you want to start, everybody says, take some improv classes. Yeah. Why, why is that? Why is, why do you think it's so important? For a number of reasons. First of all, this is the, um, it, improv is a crash course in acting. So if you come into voiceover and you're not an actor, it is a great way to become an actor real fast. And you learn acting terminology. You learn, you know, I learned how to be on stage on an improv theater. I wasn't a theater kid, you know. Uh, I learned industry terminology and I learned the importance of character. I learned the importance of choices. I learned the importance of making bold choices because you have, there's nothing there's, there's no safety net between you and the audience. You know, if I'm on stage and the guy says, all right, 
you guys are two demons in hell arguing over what to watch on television. I don't have time to think about it. I've got to become a demon in hell arguing or or watching Leave it to Beaver, and that's the end of it. You know? Um, And it it just allows you to create quickly. Um, One of the... um, one of my old coaches used to say, if you really want to learn improv, make as many mistakes as fast as you can. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Why, why, why is it that so many people think that they're bad at it? Like, like you and I have talked and I'm like, oh, I suck at this. And, uh, and then you showed up and did it. I know, which is, well, because you gave proper instruction and mm-hmm. proper, proper lead to do it. And the right, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the uh i threatened to beat you up that was what it was yeah, yeah. it was uh you know i'm you know and i stayed in the room for some reason uh but uh <laughs> well uh, if you think about w- the standard right people think of improvisation and they think of improv comedy the first thing they think of is whose line is it anyway right and that's that's the the most accessible thing anybody you know, in the middle of nowhere, when they think of improv, that's the first thing they see. And that's a half hour show edited from three hours <laughs> of content creation. <laughs> and Wayne Brady is absolutely a genius. The cast of that show, they've been doing it for years and years and years and years. Uh, and you look at that and you think, there's no way I could do that. It's like grabbing a guitar for the first time and then watching Hendrix and going, how in the world can I do that? Well, you got to learn. You got to start playing this old man. You know, you got to learn your chords. You got to learn your cowboy chords eventually somewhere. And uh, people are just afraid of failure. People are afraid of looking dumb. People are afraid of, um, of being silly. And in theater, especially in voice acting, you, you have to make those bold choices. You have, if you can't be afraid of failure, you know, it's just, you Kal El Bogdanov likes to say, make a bold choice, even if it's a wrong choice. And that's one of the things that improv teaches you right away is when, when you're on stage, you make a bold choice and the audience is with you the entire time. It's great. Um, when you get a script, you, you've got to make choices on whatever your audition is. Stick to those choices. And then the other thing that improv does is help you be more directable. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's a game that I play called New Choice. I invented none of these games. I just appropriated them um, where an actor's in a scene. And at some point I'll pull out the little bell and I'll go new choice. And they're like, I went to the grocery store and today I bought peanut butter. I, I bought an elephant. I-, I got robbed. You know, they had to make a new choice every time there's a new, uh, new cling to the bell and pivot their reality of the scene. Hmm. Fascinating. And it's, That's it's cool. wonderful to watch people's brains work, especially people who try to lock, you know, they try to find the perfect thing. And when you force them into just relying on their instinct, it's wonderful. Dan, uh, Dan I watched it happen with you. It was fantastic. You know? Well, I have to think about it, though. Sometimes as I get older, I, you know, it's like watching Jeopardy. I know the answer, but it's, I got to force it out somehow. Mm-hmm. And, by, and they're on to the three questions later. But uh, so trying to think that fast is... For me, I thought was difficult until, you know, if you give someone time to warm up to it, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. But just off the cuff like that, as you were saying, it has to, it has a lot to do with trust in the other people you're working with. Entirely. That's yeah. the thing, right? The people that I started with doing improv 25 years ago are dear, intimate, close friends of mine. One was the efficient at my wedding. The other was the best man at my wedding. We, um none of them were the bride at my wedding. I met her later. Um, but, but the whole thing is really an exercise in trust. It's no, it's nobody's job in an improv troupe to be the star. A good improv troupe does not have a star. It's five, six actors all supporting each other so that no matter what happens and no matter what weird choice Dan comes up with, Tim's got his back to justify that choice and create a reality around it. Hmm. Once again, we're talking with Tim Powers, and we're going to be doing some improv in a little, little while. It's true. Uh, if you got if you got a question, throw it in the chat room. I know Jeff Holman is trying to get the questions in there, uh, and uh, you can do it on Facebook or on YouTube Live or wherever else you're watching this. You know, send up you know send up a flare. We'll hopefully get the question. <laughs> um, send so a, send I, a cassette to George. There you go. <laughs> I, and I know for a fact that he has a cassette player. 
So who does uh, it do? Yeah, I. That's true. I probably have three or four around here. <laughs> Got to listen to the old demo tape somehow. You know? That's right. Um. So how do you overcome this this fear that people have? Uh, you know, about trying to do it, uh, and 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 perhaps the the intimidation. But well, I got to say something funny. But as you were saying, that's not necessarily the case. It's not about being funny. The the comedy that comes from improv is watching smart people figure out problems. So the most basic improv, the absolute basic improv game to, that I use to prove to people that they can improvise is called eight things. And you just, I, I'm like, okay, Dan, name eight James Bond movies. Okay. Dr. No, for Russia with Love, uh, Thunderball, Casino Royale. Right. Uh, Die Another Day or yeah. something like that. You only live uh, twice. Sure. What? You're not playing yet, George. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a, six. You a, got two more. A, a Quantum of Solace and yes. uh, The Spy Who Loved Me. Yeah. See, there you go. Now, all of those were resident in your brain. It took a minute. Somewhere, yeah. But you got them. Right. You know? George, name eight breakfast cereals. Fruit Loops, Captain Crunch, uh, Fruit Loops, Captain you Crunch. <laughs> Rice Krispies, uh, shredded wheat, frosted mini wheats, um, grape nuts. Give me two wow. more. We're going really deep now. Yeah, deep. you are. Um, puffed wheat. Yeah. And last but not least. Silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. <laughs> there you go, right? They were Tricks. all there. They were all there. You improvised all of that. Now, the, the, the cool thing that happened was once you hit, like most people can name five of anything. Right. And it's but when you all those, those were old cereals, right? Exactly. They were deep, deep in that like long term memory. Right. Bank. Puffed wheat. Come on. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who's fought, fought that in the last 20 years? Like, what, 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 what's after that? Buckwheats, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, farina. Uh, right. but, um, but watching you figure out those last three and reaching through the Rolodex of your brain was super fun. But guess what? You accomplished the goal. You hit well, it. Yeah. yeah. That that wasn't hard though. I mean, that's like you said, it's all in that Rolodex up there. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you take it to the next step after something like that? Then you start playing other games and you keep playing and you keep playing and ultimately all you're doing is encouraging whatever actor you're working with to rely on his or her instinct after proving that they have one. I just proved to both of you guys that you're smart enough to name eight things. Your 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 gut reaction is oh crap I can only name like three things, you know. There, Dan, there was a look on your eye after like the third James Bond movie where you're like oh crap, why? but <laughs> but you got there, man. Yeah. You got there, right? And so all we and then uh, take the fact that you can trust your instinct, you can prove to yourself that you're smart enough to do whatever's required of you and then i put you in another scene and before you know it two hours later you're two demons in hell arguing about what to watch in television hmm. once again we're talking with tim powers we're talking about improv uh again if you got any questions throw it in there we're gonna have we have a crowd coming in here in a little yeah. bit and we're gonna play all those games but what are some of the games i mean that was not even a game you just threw something out there about named this or name that Mm -hmm. What is uh, what? What are some of the games you play? Maybe some are, people are familiar play, with them. There are a couple of games that are that are super fun to play. There's one that I have come to. I've named it after a regular at some of the Timprov sessions. I call it the Mike Gonzalez Family Album, and Mike Gonzalez is a very sweet, very talented uh, new voice actor. And he comes to Timprov and he's got a great attitude. So I just name this game after him. And I go to the internet and I search for weird pictures of like an eight year old boy boxing a kangaroo or like World War II gas mask pictures. And I'm like, okay, tell me what's going on in this picture. Just make up a story about what's going on. And they'll tell me, you know, like a, it's a picture of like a 16 year old girl levitating on a man on a farm, like old black and weird old black and white pictures. And I'm like, okay, tell me what's going on. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's Mike's aunt Margaret. And uh, apparently she, uh, she sleeps very soundly, very, very soundly and just <laughs> levitates through, you know, and she, she used to get all her chars done while she was sleeping. And he's just making stuff up. And um, so that's one of the games that I play. Another one, a, a little more advanced game that I play uh, is called an intervention. And, uh, I, I, what, what the way I play that is I'll get a suggestion from 
the actors who are there about a personal problem that I have. Could be halitosis, could be kleptomania, could be pyromania, could be whatever, whatever it is. And then all the other actors in the uh, that are playing play characters in my life. And we actually have an intervention where they tell me <laughs> about how this thing is. Happening. Damn, this is your father. Um, you know, your halitosis is, uh, is horrible. I've had to repaint your bedroom every year, twice a year <laughs> since you were eight years old because you peeled the paint. Kmart fresh look interior latex just bubbles right off the wall with your breath, you know, or whatever. And they're just making character choices and building a world around me. And what happens is if there's six people in that room, they start building details about my life. And my dad would say, well, you know, your dog's spunky, uh, you know, uh, hates being in your room. And then all of a sudden somebody comes back and is my dog spunky? Yeah. You know, and they're just yeah. making stuff up. And these are people who had never done improv ever in their lives, but they're all actors and they all have these, you know, uh, characters and stuff having fun. Yeah. So but, yeah. how do we apply this to voice acting? Because I think one of the things that people think about is uh, auditions, because we, we've had a lot of guests on here who talk about improv and going nuts, you know, and just going with whatever you're feeling as opposed to what necessarily might be on, on the page. You know, we've had John Bailey is somebody who just can just blast. He's a, he's a machine gun. Sure. Uh, and, uh, you know, there, but, and, and he says it, you know, you sometimes just do something a little bit different or something along those lines. How would sure. you, how do you approach an audition from, from an improvisational? Uh, what improv does is help you make those acting choices faster. You are, you are, if you're, if you're in an improv cast and you're on stage and you are bestowed to be, all right, Tim, you're Captain Crunch running for president. I've got four seconds to commit to that character. And all of a sudden I got to, I got to find somewhere in me a Dawes Butler impression where I can do a passable. It was Dawes, right? No, it, was, it was Jim Backus. No, I don't think yeah, it was Jim it Backus. Was, yes, it was Jim Backus. Trust me. Okay. I'm older, I'm older than all of you guys. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> I've, I've got to find that impression okay. to be Captain Crunch running for running for president um, or make that make a character choice and commit to what however I'm going to do that. So when I look at a script and I'm like and I figure out who I am or, or if I'm doing a video game and uh, I've I've developed stock characters and I can pivot those stock characters a little bit. It all it does is really help you analyze a script faster. You know, because you're just making it up and you can trust your instincts and then you don't and then you don't worry about it. That's the beauty of it. You know, if you're committed, you know what you do and and you you trust your instinct, you can commit to the uh, to the character. Um, without without that fear of failure. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I get three or four good, uh, good ideas and just end up submitting the best two. Hmm. Now I remember doing some improv with somebody, and if you if you couldn't come up with something or you said something that just fell flat, you just go, "Ah, I failed." That's the worst <laughs> that happens. Yeah, I mean that's the worst that happens. You know, it's not like you're breaking a dish or something like that. It's just no, like, there are there are no improv cops who come and beat you with a rubber hose or anything like that. You just uh, and here's the thing: I have I have taught students where their brain locks. And they're like, I, I can't, I can't think of more than four James Bond movies. You stop for a minute and you just make eye contact and you breathe and you bring them back into the present moment because the only thing that's stopping them from doing that is their own anxiety. And that's the beauty of improv is it helps overcome that anxiety. So it's, it's not like thinking what's the fun next funny thing I can say. It's reacting, it's listening and reacting to what's happening and being able to create right away. You know, and it also, like I said, it makes you more directable. So when you've delivered something and the director goes, okay, that was great. Now let's try this. You're not locked into that and you're flexible. What greater gift does a team have than a directable voice actor? Right. Exactly. Well, I think we're going to break format a little so we can have some time to have some fun in the next half hour. So okay. we're going to take a break with Tim Powers and we're going to get into playing some improv games with some other guests who will be joining us. So don't go away. We'll be right back here on voiceover body shop. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane, the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. It's vacation time. 
just about everywhere. For example, here's Australian voiceover pro Andrew Peters on vacation in London recording a commercial with his Portabooth Pro. Why is the Portabooth Pro gaining users worldwide? Well, just listen. Winter's tough. The rain. The wind. The cold. Performers can capture great audio even in acoustically untreated spaces with the Portabooth Pro. Your microphone hears the sound of a human-sized sound booth at a fraction of the size and cost. The Pro accommodates large and long microphones, lengthy scripts, and e-reading devices. The Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro is lined with Auralex Studio Foam. It's a professional quality sound studio that assembles in less than a minute. And its multi-pocketed carrying case makes it super easy to take your gear and your voice wherever you go. Order your Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro now, just $389.99, only at voiceoveressentials.com. You know what? I'm not going to waste your time, guys, because this is a fun show and I want to get to the good stuff. So, Source Connect, you can get it at source elements.com. They have incredibly good training and support. Sign up for the subscription right away. If you're serious about this, don't just do the free thing. Sign up because the cost to get started will cover all of your training to get started and learn how to use it. And and understand it better and support this tool set that connects studios all over the world. It's worth it. Source-elements.com. Tell them that we sent you. Let's get back to more commercials right after this. Is AI coming for your voiceover career? Is it going to take all of your jobs? Man, do we hear that question a lot. And there's a lot of people that are fearful that the answer to that is yes. Well, I've been working in performance and technology simultaneously throughout my career, beginning in the 70s. And I've seen the incursion of technology, both good and bad, and I want you to have the facts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put together a course, which I'm gonna give away for free. I'm aiming for mid-August or so, talking about synthetic voices and what they mean to your future and your success. So it'll be at VOHeroes.com. Um, I'll give you details as soon as we're ready to go. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I thank you so much for watching and for listening to VOBS. And stand by. We'll get that course to you very soon. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And you didn't say a thing there, George. It's amazing. <laughs> I was trying to react and do something on camera, but uh, yeah. I was too busy typing. Okay. Well, <laughs> if you don't know you're about to be on cam, sometimes you're in the headlights. <laughs> At least I still have my shirt on. I usually That's take true. it off during the break, but. <laughs> which is always interesting to watch. I was so, looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, our guest is Tim Powers and uh, we're gonna, we're talking about improv and now we're going to do some improv. Yeah. And we have a, a bunch of guests that we are now inviting in. So Sue, if you would bring all those people in and uh, a couple of familiar faces and names. Bunch, We've got Terry Briscoe. Bunch, who's, <laughs> here's a story. A Wait, minute. there's one missing. Oh, who's missing? Come on, Sue, get in there. Well, Sue's right Fill out the Sue's Brady Band period. Come on, That's Sue. Right. Well, I Sue's, am in. Okay, oh. Sue is our director. We have Grace <laughs> Newton, Terry Briscoe, Bill Seller, I know and Amy Bermudez. How are you doing, everybody? Great. Doing very well. Awesome. Right. This Where's is Holman? awesome. All right. So, uh, Tim. <laughs> George is like, I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think he swiped to the left there. Uh, oh, not again. Okay, he'll be back. Here, right, there he cool. is. I, I did that sway, sway left <laughs> you, you, thing exactly. again. Exactly. I keep thinking Don't I'm on hot that. or not, or what's it not hot or not? What's it called? What's the thing where you swipe left? Never mind. I'm just going to mute my mic and listen. <laughs> on his Tinder profile. <laughs> so feel feel free to join in. So anyway, so welcome everybody. It's great to see everybody. So how do we get this going, Tim? You've done we're gonna we're gonna play before. we're gonna play a couple games. Um, what I'd like the, for the first game, what I'd like. Sue, if you could move uh, Amy into your spot so that the middle middle row is Terry, Grace, and Amy. Okay. okay. Um, here's the thing. Terry, Terry, Grace, and Amy are all very talented actors, but what you didn't know is they are the world's foremost expert in something. What are they experts in, guys? Clown shoes. 
clown shoes. You guys are the world's foremost experts in clown shoes, and you have been chosen to uh, address the World Symposium on clown shoes. You're the world's foremost experts, and you're going to lecture us and answer our questions about clown shoes. However, on your way to the symposium, the three of you were involved in a horrible nuclear accident, Marvel Comics level nuclear accident, and the three of you were fused into one being with one <laughs> brain, and you are only allowed to speak one word at a time in the order, Terry, Grace, Amy, Terry, Grace, Amy, Terry, Grace, Amy, Terry, always start. You don't have to end on Amy, but you can only speak one word at a time. Are you guys clear on this? Got it. Okay. Fantastic. So wait, if Grace says the last thing, then Terry has to start the next one. Terry starts the next one. Okay, got it. Okay. So welcome everybody to the to the World Symposium on uh, on clown shoes. Clown shoes are very important. A uh, very important part of the the clown costume. Um, and we're here with the world's foremost expert on clown shoes so that we can address you by name world's foremost expert would you kindly greet us and introduce yourself by name please limo globin my doctor toad us to find mysterious Mosquitoes. So that you all can experience clown shoes. Okay, beautiful. Well, Lima Globe, and we are glad you're here, and we're looking forward to learning all about uh, about clown shoes. Um, clowns have been a part of the theater tradition uh, since, you know, Commedia dell'arte, the, the early days of, of Greco-Roman theater. Um, what, what kind of footwear did clowns use before the invention of, uh, of clown shoes? The Wooden? Papyrus. Skis and tied tightly with horsehair. I'll allow it. See, there, there it is. All right, very cool. Um, tell me the story of the origin of the clown shoe. Who was who was the clown? Why did they need shoes? What happened? The Horus galloped <laughs> roughly <laughs> toward the feet and stumbled clumsily sharded. <laughs> <laughs> So it's shirt protection for the for the clown, of course. All right. Clearly. Uh, anyone anyone not playing? Do you have any other questions for the world's <laughs> foremost expert on clown shoes? Why do they have to be so big? Yeah. Why do clown shoes have to be so big? Well, feet tend to variate wobbly. Uh, flatly with oil see there you go you guys are great see give it up for yourselves all you did was you created you created this entire thing and you trusted your instincts you you guys were right there just answering the questions You're like Fuck, i don't know what to say and boom there it was there was the word that you needed at the moment that you needed it great work to play this again with some different folks all right dan or george one of you guys volunteer 
Oh, I'll volunteer. All right. So George is, I want... is fearful. I can just see it in his eye. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> All right. Can we get uh, can we get Dan, Bill, and Sue in a line together? Sue, can you do that? Oh, she's so good at this. Dan, Dan Bill, and Sue. All right. Give it up for Dan. By the way, give it up for Grace and Terry and Amy. That yeah, was that cool. was pretty cool. You guys were brave. You didn't know what I was gonna do. <laughs> and you just you showed up and you just did it. Now you guys get to do exactly the same thing. Dan, Bill, and Sue are experts in something for the rest of y'all. What are they experts in? Broccoli smoothies. I heard broccoli smoothies. You are the world's foremost experts in broccoli smoothies. You know the drill. The three of you were involved in a horrible accident. The three of you were fused into one single being. You share a brain and you can speak one word at a time dan bill sue dan bill sue the words come trust me welcome to the world uh welcome to the world exposition on broccoli smoothies we're glad to have you so that we can address you by name would you kindly greet us with a hearty hello or something like that and introduce yourself by name please. fred greenspan Crowny. Uh, those hyphenated last names get me every time, Fred. Thank you very much. It's a it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, broccoli smoothies. You know the the concept of adding uh, vegetables to smoothies is is really kind of I don't know. It's it's weird, right? But because um, smoothies, where I come from, smoothies are largely based on on fruit and sherbet. Uh, there's a high sugar content. What is the biggest benefit of putting broccoli in a smoothie? Starting with you, Dan. You're oh, you're always first. Okay. Sorry. Oh, okay. Dan Bill Sue. Dan Bill Sue. All right. So what's the what's the biggest what's the biggest advantage to putting broccoli in a smoothie? Broccoli can always keep you. That's two words. Keep you thank you regular <laughs> and smells fabulous so always use broccoli in everything everything all right <laughs> today's vobs brought to you by the broccoli council broccoli keeping america flatulent since 1954 um all right cool um broccoli uh the 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 texture of broccoli doesn't always lend itself to being uh blended into a smoothie what are some things that i can do to make broccoli a little more palatable and give it a, a better mouthfeel try adding castor oil and flax flax flaxseed is one word yeah I'll go with that <laughs> okay, we'll go with flax seed it's your word dan <laughs> and laxatives always easy coming in easy coming out <laughs> super super easy all right anybody else have any questions about uh, about broccoli smoothie How long will it be? Let's see. What, uh, what here's 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 what I want to know. Here's what I want to know about broccoli smoothies. Uh, tell me about the recent failed attempt to add a broccoli smoothie to the McDonald's menu. At McDonald's, somebody put. Two much broccoli <laughs> in shamrock shake yeah see yeah 
Yeah. They went from minty to whatever they are now to broccoli. And somebody just, that's why the ice cream machine is always broken. It's broccoli's fault. Damn it. People All right. Great dying, work, you guys. Like okay. So did you see what happened? You guys started throwing out words that were compounded or uh, you were able to follow the concept and bring in a word right after knowing instinctively what the word was going to be. When Bill said two and Sue came with much, that's relying on your instinct and justifying the reality of uh, of what's there. None of you tried to be funny. You were just all present in there. And Dan figured out the hack of the game, which is when you don't know what to say, throw in a conjunction. Just, and... <laughs> And then kick it to Bill. <laughs> that's the, that's the hack to this game, right? Yeah. But well, there that, you were. That, that that only fit because it, would, it had to had to create a the, sure. the, the progression. But it works works every single time. And but or nor and all the conjunctions work beautifully. There it is. Well, nice conjunction. Junction. <laughs> nice What's work. Your function. All right. Um. Let's see. Let's. All right. Here's what we're gonna do next. Is you guys are gonna tell me uh tell me a story. Okay. Um, Dan, where's the cool place that you went on vacation at some point other than Buffalo, New York? Uh, Morocco. <laughs> Morocco. Beautiful. All right. You guys are going to tell me a story. Grace, Bill, Terry, Amy, you guys are going to tell me uh, a story about what happened in Morocco. Sue, do you want to play too? <laughs> sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> so one of you is going to start telling me the story. And at some point, I'm going to stop you and tell you that your internet sucks. Okay, Sue, so, um, can you um, actually, Sue, so I, I don't want you to play. I want you to, to handle the mute button. So at some point, I'm going to put a message to you in the private chat window to mute whoever is speaking. Can okay. you do that? Yep. Okay. And at that point, I'm going to say, hey, George, your internet sucks. Bill, pick it up from here. And then Bill will pick up the story from exactly where that, uh, from exactly that point. Does that make sense? So this is a game you just you play. It's if if we were in stage, I would just point at you, and you would tell that part of the story until I stopped and pointed at somebody else. But since we don't have that, the game has been reconfigured for Zoom, and now I can say, "Grace, your internet sucks." Bill, pick it up from here, and then he does because Bill's good like that. So uh, this is the story about what happened in uh, in Morocco. Grace, can you tell me? about uh, like what happened what what what's the deal everybody's talking about morocco well my understanding is well according to tmz <laughs> that is uh well dan and marcy were on vacation just having a wonderful time mm -hmm. and all of a sudden matthew mcconaughey comes out of nowhere weirdest part about it is he had a shirt on and he was buying up all the moroccos because he had run out of them and i couldn't even believe what i was seeing I didn't even know he knew where Morocco was. I just didn't. I was so surprised. And it ruined Dan and Marcy's vacation. And he was just going crazy. And he took the Moroccos right out of the Moroccans' hands and Dan and Marcy's hands. And I, it was very upsetting. I think he needs to. He needs Jesus. That's what he needs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stop playing those Moroccos. Keep going, Grace. <laughs> Your internet is just fine, Grace. Keep going. <laughs> well, TMZ, they just couldn't believe it. That lawyer guy and the guy with the hair, they were just going back and forth. They didn't. Oh, Grace. Grace. Oh, oh, Grace. It oh, your broke. internet. Your internet sucks. <laughs> Frisco, pick it up from here, buddy. Uh, So they took it from his hands, and then the authorities got control of the situation at hand. So they said to him, you cannot take these Moroccans from these Moroccans. You just can't do it. Okay? What you can do is you can go down the street and you can buy yourself a fez. They ain't let <laughs> show you where to get the fez. Now, I've seen the fez. They can show you where to get it. Okay? Now, everybody, let me explain something to you. Something to tell you what, what, I'm going to tell you what else. While TMC was there, they saw mermaids. They saw what? They saw, oh, oh, we'll never know because Briscoe's internet <laughs> sucks. They see what? Amy, pick it up from here. Damn. <laughs> a merman? I can't believe that somebody saw a merman in Morocco. Um, but I'm sure that merman must have been wearing a very sexy fez to go along with his very sexy scales. 
but uh, it definitely was not Matthew McConaughey because he got ran out of town because he took Dan and Mar <laughs> Maracas. I didn't even know they had maracas in Morocco. I thought it was <laughs> all about fezes. I thought it was all about Jason Bourne, you know, getting away from uh, the assets, you know, hopping from roof to roof. That's what I thought it was all about. But, uh, you know, Merman, Jason Bourne, Matthew McConaughey. I mean, for me, Morocco is all about... <laughs> Oh, Amy, seriously. Now, I know where you live. I know you've got good internet, but you seriously, you need to get off America online because your internet sucks. Bill, pick it up from here. So I, I, I saw the same thing, really. It was, uh, you know, first of all, I don't know what I was doing in Morocco. I, I bought a train ticket for Macon. I don't know what the frick happened, but I wound up in Morocco. <laughs> Next thing you know, there is Matthew McConaughey, but he didn't get kicked out because of the Morocco. Turns yeah. out. He and Woody Allen were sharing a tent. Uh, not Woody Allen. Who's the other guy from Cheers? Woody Harrelson. <laughs> he and Woody Harrelson. So here's the thing. And, and what happened was they were in that tent, and they opened the tent, and the smoke comes pouring out. Next thing you know, you got wacky camels everywhere, people just floating around in the streets of Morocco. And the police finally said, you know what? That's enough. And, and uh, you know, because there's Harrelson naked and everything but a fez. He's just wearing a fez and he's dancing around the streets of Morocco. And, you know, uh, McConaughey's banging on his maracas. Well, not not Harrelson's maracas, because that'd be painful as hell. You know what I'm saying? But, but you know, just naked guys running around the streets. And that's pretty much how the two of them got, got kicked out of Morocco. Um, yeah, see, there you go. So, and there's your story. There's your story that's about what Morocco. I hey. Beautiful. Nice work. See, everybody was paying attention to the details, little details that other people leave. And and playing games like that will help you find those little details in the script that give you an idea of, of what your character is. You start looking for keywords. You start looking for things that are out of the ordinary and help define your character. Every one of you guys just rocked it. Nice work, everybody. I love Grace's, I love Grace's character when she tells me I need Jesus. Yeah. That's just one of my favorite Grace characters. Yeah. So, Tim, um, uh, yes. we, we have a couple questions here. Uh, okay. One from Catherine J. Jarvie. Do you have any tips for dealing with post-decision regret? You know, that feeling in the pit of your stomach where you go, why the heck did I say that of all things? You know, it, it's funny. Um, the one of my old coaches, I don't know if you ever met Lori Tritel, uh, and she was the voice of Playboy Television, and she passed a few years ago. She was a great coach. She used to say, The best audition you ever do is the one you do in the car on the way home. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So your, your, uh, your regret uh, after post, post choice. Send it and forget it, man. You got no control over it once you hit the send button, and just just release it into the into the universe. You know, if you if you have a better choice, remember it for next time. That's really it. Yeah. All right, let's bring everybody back in, but we got to bring Jeff Jeff in too. So okay. uh, Jeff Holman, who's also a professional actor. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Unmute Jeff. yourself. Hey, there Jeff. <laughs> Unmute Jeff. We got time for one more game? Oh, we got, yeah, we sure do. Boom. Okay. We go. All right. Cool. Okay. Well, th let's play, let's play one more game. Uh, all of you actors, every single one of you, Dan, George, Sue, everybody, you have cool stuff within arm's reach of you. Grab something, whatever it is. Grab, grab something within, uh, within arm's reach. Right, whatever, whatever that may be. Okay, show me what it is. Okay, now the item that you have in your hand may or may not be that specific item, but what it what it actually is, you're gonna tell me what it is because it's gonna solve a problem that I have. Okay, and so uh, the problem that I have is that my next door neighbor's dog keeps barking while I'm trying to audition. Okay, and so for me, the item that I have is this guy right here who will actually walk up to the dog, lift, lift the top off his head, and release a gas that will neutralize the vocal cords of the dog for 45 minutes so that I can get my audition in. It also smells like beef so that the dog will, <laughs> will approach it, right? Uh, and it will neutralize the vocal cord 
for uh for the dogs and that's how we're going to get silence in my neighborhood so that i can lay down all those auditions that i've got bill what do you have well um what i have here is something i'm very proud of I, I've, I've been working on this for years to help mm -hmm. with uh, animal control okay uh to avoid the noises when you're trying to do your thing sure uh so while your dog's vocal cords are neutralized by you uh what this is um th this is something that that he can chase around the yard that doesn't make any noise you see i put this down on the ground and this thing starts to go and it looks like one of them rabbits at the dog track mm -hmm. okay so he's actually running away from you <laughs> and can't talk so you got your time to do what you need to do and i'm very proud of this because i have put years and years of research into this and i'm very happy with the way things have turned out brilliant invention you can't argue with success bill nice work yeah, thank you. amy what do you have ma'am <laughs> So I have um, <laughs> bobblehead from yeah. Donald's Happy Meal from a few yeah. And um, this is not just any um, bobblehead toy. This this rocket actually at nighttime after midnight yeah. comes to life as Rocket from the Guardians of the Galaxy. And he can go to your neighbor and he can just have a gab session with that dog because, you know, he can communicate very persuasively with any form of life. And he will, um, he's not going to hurt the dog, but he's going to make the dog think twice about barking during business hours. And uh, the dog may never bark during business hours again once Rocket gets done talking to him. There you go, right? It's very persuasive the art of persuasion i need you to stop barking and i need that guy's leg all right cool <laughs> that's great amy all right jeff what do you have buddy uh i've got um what looks like a uh, airpod case but it's not airpods mm -mm. actually um the way you get the uh barking dog to stop barking is you release this cap here and it emits a uh, sonic frequency that um the dog can hear but you can't and um it drives the dog away and uh, gets it to stop barking and Brilliant. um just in case you uh you have a problem with another noise this is a noise canceling bud to put in your ear to uh further help with that problem very very see the stuff you find on wish.com it's amazing right jeff great well, yes. great work so Thank what you. do you have so i have a little ai prototype so what this is is an example <laughs> <laughs> of a dog that its head will come off and you can actually put it on its tail so in the future what's going to happen is the dog is going to be approached by this little character um this automated ai bot and it's going to confuse the dog because it's not going to know whether it's smelling its ass or its head <laughs> <laughs> the dog's just gonna run away so that's that there you go nice. stay tuned <laughs> nice grace what do you have dear i have what appears to be just a regular stuffed animal but mm -hmm. it is anything but yeah it has bionic fibers on the inside of it, and it oh. also is filled with a powdery substance, kind of like catnip, but for dogs, it's called dognip. Um, <laughs> and the, but, the dog is attracted to chew it up, therefore keeping, keeping its mouth full, and it won't need to bark if its mouth is full. But it's so tiny, you would think, oh, he'll be done with it in five minutes and then go continue barking, but no. It has the microbionic fibers, and so it's very, it's basically indestructible. 1999, uh, <laughs> GraceNewtonVO.com. <laughs> Grace asks for the clothes. Nice work. All right. There it is. Microbionic. I love that. Terry, what do you got, buddy? Well, what we have here is the world's first retractable clown shoe. <laughs> you know the problem with clown shoes is that they're so large that you, you find them very hard to pack. So what we've done is we've contracted 
two very large clown shoes into this tiny little figure. And what else can help you with is if you have a dog that you need to get away from your booth, you take it, you separate it into the two clown shoes, and you clap it at the dog and they run away. <laughs> there you go. Right? <laughs> Great work. George, what do you have, sir? Uh, what I got here is a lump of amber. Okay. What I've got trapped in this lump of amber is everything from my past that I can't stand no more. <laughs> <laughs> so what so what I do is I just get a little bit more amber. Right. I put that dog in the middle of that big <laughs> ball of amber and I let that thing just set up real good. Takes about 48 hours. But when it's all done, I got the neighbors in a ball of amber. <laughs> the dog in a ball of amber. <laughs> ball of amber. There you go. dog is going to make another sound forever. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Right? Crazy stuff. Oh, man. Dan? What do you have, sir? I had so much time to think about this. This is a decanine felineizer. It will take <laughs> any dog and turn it into a cat. All you got to do is flick this, and it'll just change it into a cat like From that. And then, and then you don't cat. have to worry about like it barking. It just maybe perhaps slightly more loud meow. Wow. There you go, right? That's a, that's a handy device to have. See, there you go. Nice work, everybody. Now. Oh. All of you made that up completely out of whole cloth. Made a Grace made up words. <laughs> Microbionic. <laughs> you know? But but and and it was hilarious that she did, but it worked in the reality of the environment that we've created where anything literally can happen and that's the beauty of acting. Literally anything can happen. Mm. I've been eaten by a dinosaur. I've been a penguin. You know? Terry's flown spaceships. I've seen him do it. <laughs> you know mm. i directed him through it and yeah. we and we commit to whatever reality is on the page so when grace says there's something called microbionic fibers great we we know exactly what she means and then I she proceeds it. to explain yeah. it i've totally you know? with it. Yeah. i believe it man yeah so tim uh now you teach classes doing this i do how do how do people get a hold of you and can take your classes well, I am happy to announce that beginning in August, there will be Thursday night Tim Provs twice a month. Uh, and if you would like to be a part of that, they start at 9 p.m. Eastern. Email me is the best way to do it. Tim at voiceofpowers.com. So if you could put that up or if somebody could clear on that. Tim at voiceofpowers.com. There will be a landing page uh, in production very soon. Yeah, Tim at voiceofpowers.com. Shoot me a shoot me a note and you can play games just like this and bond with these folks and, and have fun. Did anybody not have fun playing these games tonight? That's always nope. fun. See, yeah. there you go. There okay. you go. So Dan is uh, one of the few people who has actually done a Timprov in person and got to experience it for yourself. What did if you don't mind me asking you a question on your own show, Dan? Sure. Testimonial. Uh, what no, I'm not asking for testimonial, but what did you see in the room? What happened in that room when when you did when you took a improv workshop? It, it was just it was just a free for all. People could do whatever it was they wanted, and and it was fun. Because, right. Of course, of course, we knew other people in the room, and that always helps. And then there were people we didn't know, and it was there were people we didn't know, right? And yeah. you watched what I watched in there was watching people overcome their initial inhibitions. Everybody came in a little little reserved, a little held back, and by the time we were done people were literally bouncing off the walls. It was insane. Yeah. And they were all in each other's brains. What like that, that look, that game where you com complete each other's sentences, you literally get inside each other's heads and you start thinking, you know, along the line with the other folks. And it's fascinating. And, and that helps you yeah. work in an ensemble, helps you work well with your director and your producer. All that stuff is all right there. So great job, everybody. Yes, there will be Tim Provs starting Thursday nights. Uh, Tim at voiceofpowers.com. Goodbye, everybody. All right. Tim, thanks for being with us tonight. My pleasure, guys. Looking forward to seeing you next thanks, time. Thanks, Tim. That was fun. All right. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back to wrap things up and re-rack it for Tech Talk. So don't go away. You're still watching VLBS? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions, bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. All right, you know, a, a lot of our viewers are brand new to voiceover. They're trying to learn all the tricks of the trade and making sure one that they sound good and learning proper performance techniques and all those sorts of things. But one of the most important things you have to have as a voice actor is a website and <laughs> you know something, your website shouldn't be a pain in the ass. So my good friend, Joe Davis over at voiceactor.com has templated websites. You can start for free. Go over to voiceactor.com check it out. They've got templated things. You can change the colors, change the pictures. You can change all sorts of stuff to make it look the way you want. And you can do it and get yourself online for free initially in about 10 to 15 minutes, if you're good at following menus and stuff. But the instructions are really clear. So go over to voiceactor.com and get your own website now, as opposed to waiting six months while some webmaster says, Uh, That's 25 bucks for a comma here. Anyway, voiceactor.com. Go there now and get your website. We are the World Voices Organization. Also Also known known as as WOVO. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. WOVO is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, Our exclusive demo player for your personal website. Our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library. Our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with With the the chance chance to learn learn and and network. network. Webinars and great speakers and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We We speak speak for those who who speak speak for for a living. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Alas Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. And we're back. And our thanks again to Tim Powers for a very entertaining hour. Indeed you know, it was. Improv is, you know, it's not as hard as it looks. And if you if you got the right, the prompts, that's the word I was looking for. Proper prompts. Mm-hmm. That'll get you there. Anyway, uh, we're going to we're going to be signing off here in just a minute and re-racking it for Tech Talk, which we ad lib every other week. <laughs> There's no script. Somehow we come up with the show. All improv, all made up information. No, without a net. And uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Well, why don't we take a look? We got Greg Cooper, Grace Newton. Hey, Grace, he was just with us. Christopher Epperson, Robert Leadham, Stephen Chandler, Casey Clack, Jonathan Grant, Thomas Pinto, Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Sarah Borges. Philip Sapir. Brian Page. Rob Ryder. Shawana Pennington Baird. Don Griffith. Trey Mosley. Diana Birdsall. Maria Mackus. And Sandra Manwiller. Thank you all. You can donate to the show by going to our web our webpage, VOBS.tv, and Click donate now. You can give us a dollar a month. You can give us ten dollars a month. You can give us a hundred dollars a month, or you can give us a hundred dollars a year, or you know. And by the way, little known fact: yep. those names that you just heard are all the most successful voice actors in the business, right? Because Absolutely. we read their names every week. Every week, and 
people know who they are. Uh, I thanks to our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActor.com. And... WorldVoices.org. The Industry Association of Freelance Voice Talent. All right. Running a little long in this hour, but what are you going to do? It was worth it. You know, as one frog said to another, you know, time sure is fun when you're having flies. Uh, Anyways, (laughs) stay tuned for Tech Talk. Get your questions in now. Uh, But look, we're trying to bring you everything you could possibly have to make sure that your voiceover career is doing right. You know, whether it's performance or tech or whatever. But. It comes down to one thing, as far as George and I are concerned. If it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or V-O-B-S. Stay tuned for Tech Talk. Don't go nowheres.